The American population consumes over 50 billion single-use plastic bottles every year. That is enough to wrap around the equator of the Earth 190 times. Did you know that the US uses over 12 million barrels of oil every year solely for plastic bag production? About six years ago, Santa Cruz County banned the sale of single-use plastic bags to encourage people to bring their own reusable bags. A majority of plastic bags in Santa Cruz County ended up in the landfill or in the ocean. When you recycle your plastic bags, waste management facilities are unable to process it because plastic bags ruin their machines. When I found out about this, I was shocked. I always prided myself on being environmentally conscious, and I always took the extra effort to properly dispose of my plastics. Then it occurred to me, if I hadn't known about this, then surely there were others who didn't either. This led me to talk to local municipalities and do even more research about what really happens to our plastics after we put them in the blue bin. Here's what I found out. Out of the 50 billion single-use plastic bottles Americans consume annually, only 13% is recycled. That's because not all plastics are the same. There are thousands of unique plastics, and they all fall into seven official categories. Type 1 is typically used in bottle making, and Type 2 is usually used for children's toys and other hard things. Type 3 is usually used for pipe making. Type 4 is used in bags. Type 5 is used for Tupperware containers and prescription bottle pills. And Type 6 is used in packing peanuts and those to-go clamshells that you always get. And that last type, Type 7, is generally known as miscellaneous plastics. This means that Thousands of unique plastics are lumped into one group for the sake of administrative convenience. Now this may not seem like a problem, but it leads into the next misconception. That all plastic waste is treated equally. Depending on local plastic consumption, only certain types of plastic will be economically viable for recycling plants and municipalities to recycle. These are typically type 1 and type 2. The rest of the plastic is treated like regular trash and thrown away. Even economically viable plastics still must meet strict standards in order to be accepted. Now, raise your hand if you recycle your single-use plastic bottles. Now keep your hand up if before you recycle the bottle, you always remove the bottle cap, rinse out the inside of the bottle, and take off any label on the outside of the bottle. Nobody's hands is up because you didn't effectively recycle your single-waste plastic bottles. All of your bottles ended up in the landfill because you didn't properly prepare it for recycling. Up until recently, all economically viable plastics were hand sorted out and sold. The rest was sent to landfills and 21 million tons was sent to other countries, primarily China. But in 2018, China stopped taking our plastics. This move was driven by the overwhelmingly negative impact that it has had on their country and its citizens. Waste disposal companies across China and Southeast Asia have been employing a harmful and illegal disposal practice called midnight burning, which involved burning large quantities of plastic in the middle of the night to avoid public scrutiny. The toxic smoke produced from these burnings was getting into the lungs of citizens and making them sick. Now you may be wondering how this relates to the US. The truth is that a majority of the plastic being burned came from US brands with labels that proudly said, made in America. China's move to reduce plastic waste imports has inspired other Southeast Asian countries to do the same. This has caused a crisis for our country. We no longer have the luxury of outsourcing our recycling to someone else. We must come up with effective solutions here at home. And with the dwindling availability of land, combined with plastics having a half-life of over 450 years, landfills are not a long-term disposal strategy. As with other environmental problems, prevention is better than cure. As a country, we need to raise our collective awareness about how much plastic we use on a daily basis. It starts with a plethora of single-use plastic items that have become normal in our lives. When you go to a fast food restaurant for a quick meal, you end up with single-use plastic bottles, lids, straws, utensils, and more. By simply carrying around a reusable bottle, and food container, you can significantly reduce your plastic footprint. As with other environmental problems, 
Prevention is better than cure. Community organization will be critical for enacting meaningful and environmental changes. Through the cooperation of ordinary people and their local governments, legislation and policies can be implement implemented to reduce your community's plastic footprint. You can also engage with local ongoing initiatives in a more meaningful way and encourage your municipality to do the same. Nonprofits are a great way to help out. That's why I've started Heart Plastics. Heart stands for heating, extruding, and recycling technologies. Heart connects people with their municipalities to divert their single-use plastic into viable products using a machine that accepts all types of plastics. Yes, even three, four, five, six, and seven. Remember those plastic bags you were recycling? They can now actually be recycled. And those single-use bottles they had to properly clean before disposal, you no longer need to clean them or remove the cap and label. This means that some non-plastics such as food waste, sawdust, and even dirt can be put into this machine with no problems. This machine can even be modified specifically for each municipality based on their needs and local plastic production. The plastic is heated into small pieces. It creates a Play-Doh-like substance which can be formed into new useful materials. That means that that plastic waste going to the landfill can be diverted and thousands of pounds can be saved from midnight burns. You can tell the product is 100% recycled by the colored specks seen throughout it. During the recycling process, a variety of colored plastics are blended together, creating a plastic with a black base and multicolored pieces. About 13 years ago, a company used this recycled plastic material to create sidewalks. They laid miles throughout California. But, unfortunately, due to backlash from the look of the black speckled sidewalks, they were ripped out of the ground and replaced with cement. Thousands of pounds of plastic were sent to the landfill. They had an opportunity to reduce their plastic waste problem. And now that China isn't taking our plastics and our landfills are over capacity, we no longer have that luxury. California alone throws away almost 100 million pounds of single-use plastic bags every year. With my proposal, that 100 million pounds of plastic can be usable material that doesn't need to be thrown away. If every county in California used this machine, we could recycle over 100 million pounds of plastic every year. And that plastic could be used as a substitute for common materials such as metal, wood, and cement. For example, Pallets made from the recycled material have proven to be more durable and economical than traditional wooden pallets, lasting up to five times longer. And wooden railroad ties, the piece of wood underneath the rails, have a lifespan half that of the plastic version. And this isn't just true for railroad ties and pallets. Plastic products typically outlive their wooden counterparts with lifespans of up to 50 years. And after 50 years, we can still take back all that plastic and make it into something new again. You can even use plastic in your own home. You can have a 100% recycled bench on your 100% recycled deck, looking over your neighborhood with 100% recycled sidewalks. <laughs> the possibilities are endless. Now this may sound great, and it certainly is, but there is one big thing that Heart is missing. You. As a community, we could have the ability to recycle all the plastic in the world. But if nobody wants it, then it's useless. That's why I need your help. We've talked about some of the major issues facing plastic waste disposal in this country and the misconceptions surrounding it. We've also talked about why our current method for handling plastic waste isn't just terrible for the environment, but unsustainable. By talking to people about the problem, supporting recycling companies, and buying products made from 100% recycled plastic from machines that take 100% plastic, we can change the world. We can all do it. It'll just take a little bit of heart. Thank you.